Hey seventh graders, so I want to take some time to go back into our lesson today about one point perspective drawing. When we want to use perspective drawing, it is usually because we are trying to, to show depth in our work. Um, for example, a box looks like a shape, but by using one point perspective or two point perspective drawing, we can turn that flat two-dimensional shape into something that looks three-dimensional and has form. It then becomes a cube. So in class, we used our ruler to make our horizon line. And when you draw this, just do it light. Okay? Somewhere along that horizon line, you will need to have what's known as a vanishing point. So here I'm going to write horizon line. Okay. And I'm going to do my vanishing point here. Uh, for right now I'll just do this. Now, as it sounds, a vanishing point is what everything is going to point to, okay? As we move back into space, we are vanishing into this spot. Think about a city. As you walk down the street of a city, you will see all the buildings going down the same row and then vanishing to a single point, okay? Um, I want to see real quick if I can show you. Here's a great example. This here, our dot where the road ends, is our vanishing point. The horizon line is along that vanishing point. Okay? So everything that you draw below the horizon line, you will see the top of, and you will see the sides. Anything above the horizon line, you will see the side, and sometimes you may see the bottom, okay? So this is just a quick example of how it might look. Now, for our assignment, I would like you to first draw a box that sits directly on the horizon line a box or rectangle, any shape that is below the horizon line. And then you will also have a box above the horizon line. Now right now, we already established in class that this is just a shape, okay? There is no three-dimensional sustenance to this. Now in order to make it something that's three-dimensional, we actually need to use a ruler to connect each of our, our corners on our shapes to our vanishing point. Now, we won't see the insides of these boxes, okay? So in class, we used a dash line to represent the inside of those boxes. So what I'm going to first do start with my bottom box. I want to line my ruler up so it's touching the vanishing point. I'm going to line it up to this edge here. And I'm going to go as far as I want, okay? Keeping my ruler touching the vanishing point, I'm going to scoot it on over to the next corner of my box and draw a line. And then using my ruler, I'm going to line it up with the vanishing point and my corner. I'm going to have it go back. Okay? Notice, though, how I haven't done my dashed line like we practiced in class. I could do that. Okay? That helps me see that this is a three-dimensional form. However, if that's more confusing for you, we'll just skip the dash lines. 
Then using our ruler, we need to connect our bottom and our top line. And we need to connect our top line to the or on the top of our cube as well. Okay. Now just to make this look better, I'm gonna try to even these out a little bit more. I'm going to change a few things. Okay. So because I didn't use my ruler, my shape looks pretty off. But now it looks a lot more clean and shows better craftsmanship. So when it is below the horizon line, you will see the top of a box. And you will see the side of a box. I do not, though, see the bottom of this box. But I will see the bottom of this box because it is above my vanishing point and above my horizon line. So if I'm doing exactly the same process that I did down here, only up here, I'm going to line my ruler up with the vanishing point and to the corner of my box. Okay, oops, I didn't want to go all the way down. And then same over here. Now, I will not actually see any sides of this box because it, is, because it is directly over my vanishing point. <coughs> but if I wanted to do a box over here, just, oops, <laughs> just for added practice and to see the difference between this and this, I would line my ruler up to the corner of the box and draw a line. Line my ruler up to the vanishing point and to the corner of that box, draw another line. And again, okay. Now I can see the bottom of my box and the side of my box. And now I'm just going to connect these lines. Anytime you connect any lines, any tails that are hanging off of those lines, just for craftsmanship's sake, we should erase those neatly, okay? Okay, so then on to my box that sits right on the horizon line. Doing the same method. I'm lining my ruler up to my vanishing point and to the corner of my box. And I am choosing how long I want this to be. Doing the same to this corner. And then I'm just going to connect these. And just like that, I have all of these boxes that are exploding out of the center vanishing point. Now, if you want to get really creative and do a lot of practice, you could actually turn this into a bird's eye view of a city. As if you were looking down over top of all the buildings, and this down here is the ground. So, I'm going to do one more giant box. Just because I want to take some risk here. I want to see what else is possible. I'm going to connect this dash. Remember, you can get as close to the vanishing point as you want to. And then I'm lining my ruler up with the vanishing point in the corner of my box here. And then, bam, I have to stop at what I already drew. Notice how... I did not go through this shape here. Simply just went around it. Now, just some food for thought. This large box here looks so much closer than this teeny tiny box. Okay? So when you make something really, really large like this, 
it comes closer to your viewer, whereas this is more in the background. So this is what I would call the foreground because it is closest to the viewer. This I would call background. And then whatever is left in between is going to be my middle ground. So this, since it is the largest shape, is the closest thing to me. This is a little bit further away, but not too far. And this is way far away. So if you want to try something new and take this exercise to the next level, try turning this into a cityscape. If you want to add windows along here, you'll use a ruler. And very neatly, you will replicate the lines that you have just made using one point perspective. Okay. If you want to add in roads, that's fine. That helps with the depth. Okay, this is, an, this is an activity where you can get a little bit more creative with what you do. I would just like to see you apply your one point perspective knowledge in a different way and one that is a little bit more creative to your interests.